first uh, incidence also is rising because of this changes in temperatures and then global warming uh, almost 1.5 degrees centigrade that is exceeding okay uh, 2024 they have told even uh, now also they are uh, uh, in the recent COP uh, meeting also that they say is you reduce immediately the greenhouse gas emission uh, part you reduce otherwise all will perish not only India or the US or uh, something total globe is uh, in a very bad shape so at any point of time it cannot say anything simply oh. so I think uh, many of you might have seen uh, the movies uh, tomorrow uh, what is that uh, the day after tomorrow and uh, 2012 there are the meteorology scientist he has built up that uh, uh, movies and uh, that came to reality now delhi may experience uh, this uh, snowfall after some time this year uh, both uh, uh, heat waves and cold waves both hit uh, delhi at uh, at a point of time, Delhi experienced 49 degrees temperature. And at the same time, uh, recently it has gone to minus 4 degrees. Minus 4 degrees means almost it is freezing too much. Okay. So, widespread these uh, frequency and intensity of the uh, climate and weather extremes, uh, they will be increasing. This is the warning they have given, and already we are experiencing. So many unwarranted, uh, unwarranted uh, incidents that are happening. All of a sudden, getting rainfall, and that rainfall is almost uh, 100 mm in one hour. That means flash floods, they are coming, and uh, many of the people, they are impacted because of the flash floods. Okay. Tropical cyclones, they are intensified. But if you observe, Earlier, uh, we used to get uh, tropical cyclones frequently in the month of May or in the month of November. These are the two months identified for uh, tropical cyclone. Now, you cannot expect when the tropical cyclone is coming. <laughs> Another thing is, earlier, there is no tropical cyclone uh, or any cyclone observed in the uh, Arabian Sea. Now, Arabian Sea is very active now. And you are getting uh, more cyclones in Arabian Sea than in Bay of Bengal. That is uh, one more thing. And heavy precipitation. This is, that is what uh, I told you. Heavy rainfall. You, you cannot expect how much rain you will get. But that uh, exceeds uh, the normals beyond, uh, I think, uh, uh, the percentages which we expect. So, so these are the conditions what they have projected. Uh, for the future. So, sorry, I don't know whether it is visible or not. Okay. These particular things across the world, this, this, these points I have mentioned here, Madagascar, Mozambique, these are the five tropical cyclones, the first one. So, these are some of the things in which uh, India and Pakistan uh, have affected with uh, very severe floods during 2020, so, uh, the last year. Okay, all these particular incidents they have um, uh, closely observed and finalized that there is a climate change point that is influencing to happen all these things. Okay, now. If you see, as far as India is, con is con uh, concerned, the rainfall, it is continuously variable. Okay. But last, uh, I think, uh, 2000, uh, 1997 onwards, if you see the variability in rainfall, it is just like that uh, you, you can see so many drought years that are uh, represented up to 2020. 1997 is a drought year, and then 2001, 2002, 2004, 2006, 2009, 2012, 
17 there is a big dry spell 54 days dry spell is there and uh, it continued after 19 2020 onwards three years continuously 2022 that uh, you, you are uh, getting good rain but at the same time if you see very heavy rainfall we are getting and you see many of the places in india they are under floods continuously under floods so these are slowly these incidents are increasing the extremes are nothing but the, uh, the deviation from normal is going up suppose you need uh, you are getting uh, 22 mm rainfall in this particular uh, time so when you are uh, re- when reality comes this 22 mm becomes 220 and in in one hour or in one day so this much variation you are uh, looking uh, you are uh, uh, experiencing in under extreme conditions okay so you see the tra- temperatures now 100 year fo- uh, 0.63 degree centigrade has increased over india in 100 years this is the um, uh, trend line what it shows so this 0.063 it is an average over india but if you see a coastal place like uh, kovur uh, where it is nearby rajmandri of uh, um, this coastal andhra pradesh where they have experienced 51 degree centigrade during may generally we, we experience that i belongs to that place we experience that but not 50 it is 42 43 because there used to be a system i think uh, if you are all studied the climatology you might be knowing uh, 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 two systems are there sea breeze and land breeze okay now because of failure of these systems you are getting lot of heat lot of dryness in the coastal areas and uh, this particular thing yeah, even though if it is average that 50 degrees also a part of this and you know that the people are traveling on train on the upper bed they are all died almost uh, one train carried almost 22 bodies they don't know they died and uh, all those bodies they have uh, uh, taken in uh, isatpur the final destination of the train was in isatpur everybody thought they are sleeping that's it because of this uh, temperature hike they, that uh, happened so now i am coming into extremism what are the extremes in nature okay first thing is biological extremes epidemics okay like uh, now we have seen this covid you see the complete world that has gone then viral infections then diseases these are all uh, coming under biological and the geological earthquake volcano mass movement rockfall landslide avalanche and uh, this uh, subsidence okay these are all uh, they are uh, recently i think uh, two days back there is a avalanche in uh, uh, that happened in jammu uh, sorry kashmir where this, uh, all these uh, skiers they are, they are doing all of a sudden it has come so we don't know when it comes and how it comes but it is coming earlier uh, the prediction system also fails because of the extremeness in the climate then we are mainly concentrated on agriculture point of view these hydrological and meteorological okay in hydrological we are looking mainly floods general flood then storm surge uh, and uh, coastal flood then in meteorological you can see storms tropical cyclones extra tropical cyc- extra tropical cyclones uh, generally you know extra tropical cyclones very factor extra tropical cyclone 
what is tropic and what is extratropic huh? hello 23 and of is our tropics and more uh, beyond that goes to extra tropics but the the system which that comes is at 32 and 31 that means uh, around jammu kashmir that is what they are called the strong, the system which is developing and coming into that part. yeah very good western disturbances okay so western disturbances they are coming from their tertiaries are fourth order uh, tropical cyclones subtropical cyclones they are coming from uh, iran and then uh, iraq from that side okay they are entering into india and pakistan and they are giving rain so that rain fall is very useful for winter crops in north that means particularly uh, this wheat crop and other crop wheat uh, this this not only brings the uh, this rainfall only but it reduces the temperature which is very much required for wheat crop because when there is a cold or chilliness automatically the wheat uh, grows with more chilliness more tillage means more uh, uh, yield that that comes so that particular uh, western disturbance helps for this and another thing is we have glaciers so every year if uh, you are not topping up then uh, your glacier is gone that means your pure water which are coming from uh, which are flowing in the rivers then uh, the amount may reduce so further uh, it will create a problem so these are all the extreme events yeah, subsidence. Uh, subsidence means actually if land is there Uh, have you ever uh, heard about sinkhole sinkhole guttamale there is a sinkhole that happened in the night i think the five story building it has gone into so these are the subsidence all of a sudden that happens now it is happening in the uh, the joshima uh, we don't know when it goes into but definitely it will it's not like it is not a earthquake all of a sudden actually what happens the under uh, uh, under surface uh, processes that uh, just uh, uh, create a hollowness this uh, below that uh, surface so it goes in what are the superstructure and this is uh, very much common in uh, florida area buildings are there in front of us simply it goes nobody knows when it goes so that kind of uh, thing that subsidence and uh, uh, this uh, this uh, landslide then uh, rock fall so storm surge is also very important uh, i think you might be knowing the uh, uh, tsunami that has come so tsunami storm surge almost same category uh, same category but tsunami comes with the volcano eruption under the sea okay or otherwise earthquake that happens in the uh, ocean so that creates this kind of uh, problem tsunami but storm surge particularly when storm is very uh, high intensity the winds they create uh, uh, a surge almost 18 18 feet 18 meter also they can so Uh, i think in 1977 there was a cyclone uh, along the coast of yeah, along the east coast east coast krishna river uh, estuary i think uh, gdcma there is a area 25000 people with uh, one hour the thing there is code yes so these these things are unwarranted and they, they don't know when it comes we we have uh, even prediction uh, even though we have prediction knowledge and we are predicting but you cannot uh, say how nature uh, aggravates 
Varanasan University in Kutsi, they have accepted this question. Recently, they have found out that there is a place called the Kutsi 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 no, Dwarka is like that only, sir. Dwarka, once upon a time, we have a link with uh, all these uh, Saudi Arabian countries. But uh, because of the tsunami that happened during Dwarka, uh, at that time, Krishna's time, uh, they have analyzed all those things with uh, in, uh, one uh, historical uh, duties there. They have analyzed uh, and compared. There is a the very severe uh, tsunami that has come and the height uh, that uh, sea level uh, raised and then Dwarka has gone. So you can see the structures under that water. So the all are because of the extremes. During and that time also extreme events happened. Sir? During that time also those Sir, extremes, extremes are natural. So nature, in nature they are some. Only our aim is uh, our aim is just to uh, understand and how to how we can uh, manage those things. That is the major part of. It. So you cannot attribute those to our human intervention. Because human intervention, uh, no cli climate. No, no. First thing is climate change. Sir. Climate change is majorly um, focusing on temperature rise. Okay, this temperature is ultimately creating the wind change in wind pattern. Earlier we used to get a low pressure at one point of time. Uh, I think uh, you you might be knowing monsoon is predicted based on uh, statistical uh, this one. Okay. Uh, yes, power regression model, one model they, they have used. 16 parameters were there earlier. And uh, they, um, after testing all those things, they have uh, confined to six parameters. <coughs> so, these six parameters, they are somewhere. And every time we used to take those six, six parameters, because they are stable and static, and they can be measured. But now they are out of uh, place because of this temperature. This temperature, what it does, you know how low pressures and high pressures are happening. Okay. So low pressure is a place where the temperature rises. So that heats up, heat up the wind and that goes up. Okay. This is, this is the formation of low pressure. So this low pressure, suppose earlier they, uh, these low pressures used to happen in one place, stably that, that is there. But, but now the land is getting heated up because of uh, forest cuts and other things. Then there is also the low pressure. So if that low pressure is very, uh, that is uh, very, uh, what you call, uh, weak, then the main low pressure is forming in this. So your place has been shifted. And that means your winds also, they are shifting from one place to other place. So this particular wind pattern, general circulation pattern is there throughout the world. You may be knowing this uh, uh, polar cell, Hadley cell, all those things you might have read. So they are all shifting. Okay. The same way under ocean also, there are so, washing conveyor belt, they, they used to call. So, all those are disturbed because of the temperature rate. That is why people, mainly scientists, are concentrating on how to reduce this temperature. Okay. So, these are the uh, particular uh, months which we are getting the extreme events, particularly winter, pre monsoon, southwest monsoon, and the post monsoon. So, major, major. Uh, Extremes are droughts and dry spells, then cold and heat waves, then floods, heavy and landslides. Landslides generally we are not considering because landslides are happening in the particularly hilly areas and hilly agriculture, they are concentrating on how to save that particular landslide mechanism, but it is not in their hands. 
okay if landslide for landslide comes they have to uh, go out of that place to save their lives then so major extremes in india are these heat wave dry winds cold wave frost these dry winds uh, i was there in modipuram for 10 years that is very near to uh, the desert area that means uh, rajasthan so winds used to come up from that place suppose in rajasthan if there is a rise uh, there is a uh, thunderstorm not thunderstorm they call it as andhi andhi means uh, you cannot see anything because only dust that moves okay that dust uh, that used to travel up to western uh, up and beyond that so you cannot see i think uh, one one week you cannot able to see uh, sun is shining just the sun will be uh, seen as a disk you can see like uh, uh, our uh, moon in the night so that kind of things they happen so what it does because the uh, it happens in may you don't have any crop in the field so there is no problem but for human it is very difficult to open their eyes that small dust what they are they used to enter so it is it was very difficult for us so these kind of things you cannot you cannot see these okay but they definitely will the um, uh, impact on you so there are droughts meteorological hydrological agricultural and then extreme rainfall events hail storms another big uh, problem i don't know how many of you experienced hail storm here in coimbatore is there any hail storm no hail storm okay <clears throat> Yes, Western Ghat areas definitely experience. So these are some of the major extremes uh, so far we have collected, and many of them, many are there. Just to, I have shown uh, some of them. Uh, you see, uh, I think uh, during 2015, this uh, uh, what is that? Chennai has gone uh, into floods. Is it the extreme? Then, as heavy rainfall happened, eh? it is not extreme, but it is man-made, man-made error. What happened? Ah, uh, no, no, it is not drainage problem. I, uh, yes, I agree, it is drainage problem, but. Uh, the major problem uh, happened all the reservoirs four reservoirs are there around chennai at a time they have filled and at a time they have opened so where did it go that water completely uh, it has gone yes sir <laughs> yes actually dredging need to be done every year that dredging is not happening in the either in river or in the reservoir uh, so so these are the major problems even uh, kerala 2018 kerala floods were there they are also man made problems Yeah. See, till last minute of that particular thing, they have uh, kept the water. All of a sudden, when they thought, okay, the reservoir may break down, so they have left. Uh, so many villages never experienced that kind of flood in uh, Kerala system. Okay, so how to assess these uh, extreme events in India? So rainfall, IMD. IMD has given certain uh, categories. With that, you can the first one large excess, excess normal, deficit large gauge. This uh, particular category is used uh, in the monsoon time. Okay, when monsoon rainfall comes, if uh, it is more than sixty percent, then it is called large excess. Okay, then. 
20 to 59 percent this is excess then normal is minus 19 to plus 19 so they have fixed this particular criteria so if during normal time if you want to see uh, that uh, this is the particular uh, um, uh, category at what uh, this particular uh, station is experiencing so in Coimbatore, suppose your normal time, uh, normal rainfall is uh, around uh, uh, some, some uh, maybe around 200 or 300 something is there. So if you are getting the 200 means, it's okay. It is normal rainfall you have received. So minus 19 percent up to up till minus 19 percent of your total amount, you are uh, uh, you are considering it as a normal. But if it is going below minus 20, then uh, it is mild, moderate, and severe. So those categories. But now comes to the extreme category. You see the downline. This particular thing is, suppose, light rainfall. That means around 10 mm. You are taking as light. Then 10 to 35 mm, 35, uh, 35.5. Then rather heavy, 64.4. And heavy, 124.4. And very heavy, beyond 124.4 mm. If that happens in one day or two days, it, they, this uh, creates a lot of problems. This is heavy and very heavy. Now, almost 34 districts we have identified where this uh, heavy, very heavy rainfall is happening and the trends are increasing. We have sent the copper, now that is in publication. So this is about rainfall. So if that uh, very heavy, heavy rainfall is there, then ultimately the consequence is your floods. Okay. The floods, uh, see, floods may happen, uh, uh, just we have discussed about, first thing is your drainage problem, second thing is heavy rainfall, and uh, all of a sudden that amount, where to go, then it is a flash flood that happens, then river flow. If river is not accommodating the excess, uh, excess water, automatically it spills over to the other end. So that is river floods. So this kind of floods, they happen during this uh, heavy rainfall event. You see, there are uh, these are some of the reasons: heavy rainfall, then heavy rainfall due to active monsoon, then abnormally warmer temperatures and glaciers. Glacier in uh, Ganga, all of a sudden the flow increases. Flow increases, and then uh, the speed of the undercurrent. Ganga, if you see. Uh, the top and the surface, it is very peaceful and it is flowing. If you put your hand in that, your hand will go just like that. That much faster it flows. So, uh, that is because heavy flow of uh, the uh, melting glacier, that water flows because of uh, the hilly region. So, the far, the, they flow uh, to the down downwards automatically it gains a lot of uh, speed. So that is the problem uh, in uh, northern side. Then cloud burst. Cloud burst, what is that? All of a sudden, it is actually orographic effect. Okay. All of a sudden, it builds up and the heavy rainfall that uh, immediately falls. And you cannot uh, even manage that uh, particular thing. In Ladakh, uh, one, one incident that happened, I think you might be remembering. The school, uh, I think all of you might have seen three years movie. Okay. That school has gone. So it went under the, almost, it is in mud and the people have died in that particular uh, incident. Cloud burst. After this movie, it has gone because of the cloud burst. Then snow melt, I told you. Then seismic events. Suppose if there is all of a sudden, you know, uh, 2004, there is an earthquake that has come uh, in Bhuj area, uh, Gujarat. 
Okay. You know, in Bhuja area, earlier, I think uh, many people, uh, the Walder people, they have uh, uh, gone into, uh, uh, they, they only know that 60 years back there was a lake in that area. So people uh, not, uh, not knowing that uh, how the water has gone, where it has gone. But during this bush earthquake, again that water has come. There is a big lake that formed. And people were very happy that water has come again. So these, these kind of uh, earthquake uh, related uh, problems are there. Now in Joshimat also, if you see, there is a break that subsidence it is causing breaks to the uh, buildings and automatically from the breaks, the drainage water and the rock water that is flowing from. So people are, people could not able to go inside their houses. They don't know when it falls. So all these things are happening now. It is just because it is all physics. If you see, when a truck that moves from uh, the ground to the top of the hill, it takes a lot of load. So it creates a lot of vibration. That vibration sinks with the movement of the soil of the particular rock. It goes into up to bed, bed of the rock. Okay, the total uh, whatever uh, soil that is attached to the rock, it is slowly, because of the synchronization of the vibration, it slowly falls down. All of a sudden, it goes as a landslide. So, what, to, how to prevent that? Nobody knows. Because already that soil is very loose. Anytime it may happen. So, we ourselves creating a lot of problems uh, for our uh, uh, luxury as well as livelihoods. Then, you see, these are the average yearly land If you see 77.2 million hectares of land, it is going under water. Okay? So, many, many times, you see, the year-wise, they have given, but the average, if you see, you are losing your agriculture, you are losing your uh, uh, properties, all, even uh, um, human uh, Casualties also increasing day by day. So next comes when heavy rainfall comes, you are facing this floods. If there is no rainfall, you are going into this particular extreme. That is drought. Okay, there are three categories of uh, droughts, and the fourth one is socio-economic drought. So these three categories are directly related to rainfall. Okay. Meteorological drought, if it is severe, then comes hydrological drought. If hydrological drought is severe, then comes agriculture drought. And if three things are uh, almost uh, impacting, then comes your uh, socio-economic drought. Okay. So, how to assess the drought? They have given uh, two manuals. You can download and see. It will be a uh, research topic also for your department people. Uh, students can take up. Uh, now PASM is coming. So for uh, assessing the drought, particularly for a crop, you can uh, fix the, if it is 40% PASM, but in one crop, it is impacting the crop. Below that, it is impacting. Above that, it is okay. But in some cases, it is 60%. So if 60% below, uh, the trap will be under severe stress and it may not be uh, uh, almost existing. Almost it uh, dies. That means trap damage will occur. Otherwise, the trap is good. So these things are uh, written in this uh, drought management and the drought. Uh, 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 these books are specifically, they have written. And all uh, uh, equations, how to calculate, all those things have been mentioned. So you can download. It is available in the website. If you, if it is not possible, you write to me, I'll send. There is no problem. It is a PDF. You can do it. 
So now you see, we have agromet advisory services. Okay, agromet advisory services. When they have started, almost uh, um, 2008 onwards. Okay, 2007, 2008. When pre-XMP 14, they have established in Delhi that supercomputer uh, that uh, started uh, simulating the model. So that model uh, is providing the good forecast based on that. We have we have started slowly uh, appraising the farmers and the planners for uh, this taking measures. So now you see 2002, there is a severe drop. I don't know how many of you know this. Okay, particularly from this point of view, this point, this uh, particular 30th June to 30th August, sorry, 30th July. There is no rain, um, uh, you can say. Okay. Afterwards, again it started. Actually, this is an um, average uh, picture it is showing. But in some cases, there is no rain. In uh, Meerut, we have on August 1st, there was a rainfall. Then we got uh, rains uh, further, 2002. Okay, at that particular uh, uh, situation, you see this rainfall distance is minus 90% overall. And then total area affected is 29% uh, overall. And then total loss was 24 million. Okay, if you consider the next uh, severe drought during uh, 2009. So 2009, it is moderate El Nino year. So it was created a big drought overall India. And then you see, it is rainfall deficiency is more than 20, uh, that's a more, minus 23 percent, and then 59 percent area is affected, but still we have lost only 15 percent. That 15 million tons. Winter. This this particular gap is filled by the technology. So technology is improved, and it has created, uh, it has uh, reduced the loss. That is why we are nowadays we are uh, uh, providing lot of uh, um, uh, focus on different technologies. Now ICR asks only products. We have not uh, earlier uh, thought of it, and it is not uh, mandatory for us. But ICR fixed now. If you are taking a project, you must come out with a product. Without product, you will not be given product. That was their uh, motive because product, it, another thing, this product uh, either it should help the policy makers or it should help directly farmers. So these two conditions ICR has done. Now any work which you want to take, if you are a very good uh, thinker and uh, you are working well and your studies are good, then you can uh, take DST products on your own. There is a provision in that. So you can do it. Okay. If you have very good uh, thinking about a product development or something. Now coming into cyclones. Cyclone starts with low pressure. Okay. A low pressure forms when the temperatures were above 26 degrees nearby Andaman Sea. But now it is all gone into uh, oblivion, that means history, because there is no difference between uh, the land surface temperature and the sea surface temperature. So they are both equal. Unless there is a gradient, nothing comes or nothing forms. That is why earlier in our childhood days, we used to see at least 9 to 10 depressions. And depression means uh, one depression it comes. It used to cover 6,000 kilometers. But now, if there is a depression, depressions are almost nil. Low pressures are there, but upper air lows, not in the, on the surface. So if you observe these things, then after some time, there is no low pressure and no cyclone, nothing. Only you are getting uh, all these cyclones because uh, in the Arabian Sea, because still, the gradient is maintained. 
that is why severe cyclones they are forming in the arabian sea and they are moving to gujarat this is what happening now the trend is like this. but actually based in this uh, uh, in oceanographic sense the arabian sea basin is very flat there is no such kind of uh, uh, eddies or uh, turbulence that is created in the water so there is no but if you go into uh, bay of bengal there are lot of trenches and then uh, the total uh, topography of that particular thing is almost hills and uh, all those things are there in that very turbulent waters but still we are not facing uh, we are not uh, having this low pressures now because of the, the uh, that difference has gone okay so severe cyclonic storms very severe cyclonic storms these are all based on the wind speed okay one uh, see 167 to 221 km per hour if uh, wind speed is there extremely severe cyclonic storm and more than that a super cyclonic storm it is called as super cyclonic storm so uh, i last year question when we have had a super cyclonic storm and where huh? Many students. <laughs> it is 1999, Madam said, and where? Very good, very successful. So that time, there was a big research happened in that. Many people have gone. Only 10,000 they have officially remarked. But uh, the people went uh, inside the particular site. Stand up, something is there. One uh, NGO is there. They are all economists, so they wanted to analyze how much uh, 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 loss it happened and what are the damages it happened. Then they went inside the um, uh, sea, uh, almost backwaters. They have gone and they have asked. Then they told almost three lakh and above people died. Villages, villages have gone. Nobody knows. But government only states ten percent. Those villages villages are saved where the mangrove forests are there. So now this sea level rise and sea um, uh, sea uh, um, what you call it uh, uh, not inflation. It is uh, if it is coming forward. So for to Control that you have to grow mangroves and uh, the things to control that. Only mangroves can stop. Otherwise, so these cyclones, particularly these are the areas uh, cyclone forms is uh, observed on the east coast as well as Gujarat coast. And these are the major cyclones up to uh, 99. Then comes your recent cyclone. 2021, there is a severe cyclone storm, and then uh, 2022, another cyclone that has come. But uh, have you, you have, uh, you are, I think you might have observed, there is no such kind of disaster that has. And if you see when uh, uh, in my childhood days. If a cyclone comes, it uh, occupies almost three four uh, states. Uh, the cloudiness uh, used, but now if you see the cyclone forms, local forms, and suddenly it becomes cyclone, and the intensity is very high. Uh, almost uh, it crosses 2020 as well, 221 kmph, but it go it never crosses the land. It only moves in the sea. And so this is the kind, uh, and uh, the size of that is only three hundred, three hundred pixels. So these are all happening due to uh, you can say a climate change kind of. So these are the impacts. Uh, many of you might be having this kind of experience also. Okay, next comes. 
heat waves. So heat waves, how do you define? These are the at least 40 degrees centigrade at a particular point and the departure may be 4.5 degrees. Now in your area, suppose it is 37 degrees if you are fixing. So if it is going beyond 42, then automatically you can pass as a heat. But heat wave, two days, minimum two days, three days, like that. In, in hilly regions, it is 30 degrees, base temperature goes to 30 degrees, and uh, the same 4.5. Normally, if it is wherever it happens, 45 degrees, if it happens, it is uh, heat wave. The, uh, hot day, or if it is going beyond the, uh, the one day or two days, then it is heat. Okay. So, recent heat wave, minus, uh, sorry, plus 49 degrees in uh, Delhi, and uh, NCR region, and even uh, up to Nagpur, those areas, the temperatures were beyond 43, 40. So these these kind of things, uh, I think, uh, particularly this period, wheat was in the uh, is the uh, standing crop, and uh, we are expected uh, that uh, this time also we are losing the wheat at least. Uh, Four or five million tons. That is uh, one of the things. So, how it happens? It is atmospheric subsidence. That means high pressure. High pressure, if you are somewhere it is high pressure area during that particular time, heat comes, but it will not spread because of the subsidence. The subsidence, what it makes, it cannot. Uh, uh, the, uh, it, uh, uh, the wind cannot rise because it, it is coming from top to bottom. Top to bottom means top it is cool and it is subsiding. So from that particular point of view, it cannot allow the wind to again rise. Okay. So that wind, uh, that particular temperatures, they are accumulating and uh, it, uh, the temperatures are increasing. So that is how the high pressure, when it forms during May, April, that creates a lot of pressure. Okay. Then you have severe heat waves. I think uh, even 2002 also we have severe heat wave. But uh, this um, this 2002 again, uh, so I think around uh, 200 people or 300 people that died. Old people always goes with this high heat. Okay. Then cold wave. So Delhi is uh, recorded minus four degrees. Okay. Here, how you are uh, measuring cold wave? First thing is the plain region minimum ten degrees centigrade we, you have to have, and the reduction goes uh, below four point five degrees. That means if uh, if you have ten degrees centigrade. Then minus 4.5 means how much? 5.5. Okay. So this 5.5, if it is reaching, then you can call it as cold. And then hill region generally uh, altitude uh, gives that temperature uh, reduces. So zero degrees and below that, that means it goes to minus. And what you experience if it goes beyond zero, not below zero. Madam, both at Chapada. She knows. <laughs> she did well. What about you? What happens if it is zero degrees centigrade or below that? You have studied a condition called frost. Okay. This frost we have experienced during that time. And uh, your groundwater, you see, uh, on surface, the water that uh, accumulates becomes uh, ice flakes. Okay, if it uh, if it goes below the surface, the roots will be frozen. Because of that, whole crop dies, and uh, you will not uh, get anything because everything is damaged. Particularly, it is, it is happening in vegetable crop. I'll show you. So there are 
different injuries uh, that is created by the cold waves chilling injury okay 0 to 2 degree centigrade then freezing injury below freezing point of water that means around 4 degrees you are getting this kind of thing light freeze minus 1.7 to 0.1 we have experienced the minus minus uh, 1.3 uh, in mirror so when we go this uh, evaporation pan the top uh, uh, surface water it is frozen so we used to <laughs> break that okay and uh, while you are walking in the field you will find ice fishes so they are found there. okay then moderate freeze then severe freeze minus 4.4 onwards severe freeze and these chilling, uh, these are the temperatures generally we are expecting. All these temperatures are now they are reduced because the morning he explained high night temperatures and all those things. These night temperatures uh, they slowly rise because of the vapor uh, uh, developed due to irrigation. North India, if you see. Whole uh, Indo-Ganesian plate uh, plains are irrigated. Plains. So, lot of water vapor that is going into atmosphere. There is an inversion. Even why uh, fog is uh, very dense there because of this particular thing. Okay. So, fog is another big extreme. Uh, when uh, we used to travel from Delhi to Meerut, you know, uh, this is the divider, road divider. And the vehicle, bus, in which I used to travel in bus around 9, 10 uh, that time. So, we cannot see anything. It is only white wall that, uh, that uh, uh, we used to see in front of the driver. Okay. So, what he used to call is uh, within, I think, one feet distance he used to maintain with the uh, road divider. Sometimes, if that fellow, because there is the divider stops somewhere when there is a village comes. Okay, so this fellow, that divider, he, he used to maintain this distance, the same distance he maintains, and he, he used to uh, go on the divider. So, next day morning, a crane comes and it leaves. So, that kind of problems. They happen during during this uh, fog days. Okay, so these are the uh, freezing temperatures on plants. So you see, these are the uh, images uh, on different. Uh, the first one is mustard, then uh, papaya leaves get dried, then jetropa, and then tomato, potato, peas, everything. Okay, but wheat crop fetches a lot. And then apples. Apples requires some chilling hours. That chilling hours, if they are there, then apple quality will be very good. So those chilling hours uh, um, that happens during the cold weather. Then comes, you see in the wheat, how the wheat is affected. Uh, there are so many things that you, you can see the change here, the color change. That is because of the uh, this, this, uh, uh, particularly uh, dryness, and then uh, you can see that the particular panel is uh, affected because of that cold temperatures. Okay. Then they are also affecting these cold temperatures, are also affecting your uh, livestock. Okay. Livestock uh, definitely reduces uh, that uh, milk production uh, is reduced, and then hormonal changes. So what uh, we generally provide uh, the agronomic advisory is take necessary arrangement, uh, make necessary arrangement for the livestock. It should be inside the room and it, it should be covered with uh, um, uh, something, gunny bag or something to uh, create that, uh, uh, keeping the heat within the body of the uh, livestock. So these kind of uh, things we suggest to them. And this is passive protection and the active protection. Active protection, suppose you know that uh, uh, frost is coming. So automatically either you give the 
um, particular thing is irrigation light irrigation that uh, that uh, generally avoids that cost eh? then you are uh, using that uh, smoke smoke also creates a kind of inversion so it also reduces the cold aspect uh, uh, you have sprinkler that is irrigation only then wind machines are there uh, big machines they come and they, they blow they blow that uh, wind so they, they also reduces the uh, frost uh, condition okay then hailstorms so hailstorms generally happens uh, in these particular areas see this is the major area which is affected by the hail particularly in nagpur area it is receiving almost 43 events uh, every okay so these are happening uh, during uh, january to april sometimes they may cross up to may also they may happen why they are happening from where they are happening if you see <laughs> thunderstorms they form when they form during the pre monsoon period okay during the pre monsoon period matlab when it is march particularly march april may but how uh, in uh, january and february they are forming and you know the height of a thunderstorm a thunderstorm goes up to 20 kilometers above beyond 20 km okay and there is a freezing condition that happens at 7 to 7 uh, km beyond so whenever the moisture that takes from the earth okay surface it is if it goes beyond 7 km automatically it freezes eh? and then that freeze again that falls but because of the 7 km height and uh, when it reaches ground the uh, the uh, particular ice that melts and you only experience the drop okay now in hail storms what happens the freezing level condition that comes down at 3 km 3 km or 4 km it happens because generally hail storms are seen in the northern northern part of the country so what happens have you ever heard about a jet stream westerly jet stream is there no so westerly jet stream sometimes in january it comes down up to raipur area up to that particular point so it is bringing cold air along with moisture okay so our, we have our uh, this uh, arabian sea and uh, bay of bengal this hot uh, winds along with moisture they also mix. so there is a concept you know the frontal uh, cyclones have you studied frontal cyclones so cold wave cold winds and warm winds they meet and they form an occluded front okay so that occluded front is a storm okay so it is not forming that occluded front but it what it does is the warm warm air that is coming from the uh, this ocean just uh, it goes so above that you see the thunderstorm height is 20 km but this particular thing is shallowly it uh, it uh, develops up to uh, 8 kilometers or 5 kilometers in 8 kilometers it develops during this particular period when jet, jet stream that comes down okay so in that particular point of time you have the updraft very high winds that takes the moisture from the uh, ground and they goes up to 3 kilometers and they freeze because of the rapid force and then 
the ice crystal forms. Then uh, uh, ice balls forms, but it differs. The draft, the speed of the draft creates the different uh, sizes of uh, hail. So from this size to tennis ball size, thick. Okay. So what happens when it is only eight kilometers? So the movement uh, is very fast within that particular thing, and it drops. So that drop, there is no uh, such distance is maintained because only three kilometers you have. So within that three kilometers, it cannot uh, actually uh, the uh, the uh, droplet will not form. Direct hail will hit. So that is where the hail comes. Okay. So these hail storms during 2014. You have seen eight states. They have impacted because of this hail storm. Okay. So, but thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yes. So these are the hail storms. Okay. And this is the time which I have uh, explained. Okay. So this is the hail, particularly it is coming down, and the impact is very much high. Okay. So you can see all the crops, they have almost maize uh, it lost. Okay. So there are forecasts. But all these forecasts are for rainfall, heavy rainfall. But uh, if you have Doppler radar, this is Doppler radar. How many of you have seen? Okay. So these Doppler radars have a kind of a mechanism to uh, track the hail. So that can be utilized for hail storm, but it is before, uh, I think, uh, only half an hour or uh, 30 minutes. So we, in our advisory, this is about uh, the frost engine you see. This fellow, this fellow is advised to give irrigation, but he has not irrigated. The other fellow irrigated and the crop you see. The same way in maize uh, uh, also. Okay. So these are the, uh, these are some of the major extreme events which we are facing in India. And there are sources for extreme data because Sometimes you wanted to study about uh, uh, the extreme event. So where are the uh, sources? So this is one of the emdat.ge is one of the famous uh, uh, website. Uh, all almost all uh, countries they follow this. So almost all countries data is there in this. And one more is Munich Ray. Munich Ray is one uh, uh, insurance company where uh, they maintain all this uh, information. Second thing is natural disasters. This is another uh, um, website where you will get this thing. Third one is nrdc.org. They also maintain uh, the unexplained. And fourth one is IMD. IMD also has data on extreme. You have to explore. And the then comes recently this particular uh, uh, what is the term uh, down to where they have started recently up to 2018 data it is available then comes NDMA NDMA uh, is also uh, uh, providing this uh, almost all uh, extreme weather events they are there in the NDMA so we are uh, we are now working on a project on this extreme extreme event monitoring network. Uh, I am uh, leading that project. So we have these many centers and the app which is uh, straight away going to the public. And uh, we are expecting something. Uh, I will explain you.
that is Thank you. 